Welcome back to Default News. I'm still Lee Honish. That's still Mike Cuevas. Uh, coming to you from California, Chicago. We are the uh, brains and the muscle behind Certified Default Advocacy Training. And this is your Default News for the week. Continued. Turning to the Wall Street Journal Online. Um, I like this. Uh, a little quick report that the uh, that JP Market Chase is actually hiring. Despite... Yeah. Declines. Yeah, I mean, you but would so, think it would be the opposite. So, what's behind oh, this? No doubt about it. Yeah, that's uh, amazing. You can go visit online.wsg.com, as you can see on the screen right now, um, and watch the report. Uh, I'm I'm stunned by this. Okay, they're they're um, posting a 23 point, you know, 23 percent quarter decline, right, in quarter four, right, and they're talking about doing a higher now. The question is, and, and of course these reporters always seem to get it wrong in my opinion, what's the obvious reason that there's rumors of Bank of America hiring 30,000 processors, J.P. Morgan Chase hiring more processors? What's it all about, Mike? Ignore guess. Wild guess. You don't have to be a Wall Street uh, Journal reporter to figure well, this one out. Well, being that the larger servicer is selling their servicing rights, I would think that they're gearing up to take on more servicing. You, you would think, right? Yeah. I mean, that, you know, I, this also goes back to a Bank of America story that uh, happened uh, that I got a tip from a couple of weeks ago that Bank of America was considering, you know, some very ridiculous, you know, uh, hiring, hiring increases, right? Um, and again, you're right, absolutely. And it's funny whenever I watch these reports or you go online and you watch these reports, these reporters are so incredulous or, you know, like they just don't, oh, they've lost 23%. How can they be spending money? And now they're talking about expanding their servicing or they're, you know, they're talking about hiring employees. Well, yeah, there's more files coming in in a negative way. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of it, and this is what the general population doesn't understand. Let's switch just towards loss mitigation. I'm going to give you another reason, uh, in my opinion at least, Chase may be hiring. Um, well, you know, the stats have come out. CoreLogic have released their stats. All the stats have shown that short sales mitigate banks' losses by 20%. Okay, so wouldn't it be worth it to hire one person? Okay, and if you got one employee that was able to take down say, uh, let's say they in one year, one employee is able to approve, uh, let's see, how about 200 files in one year? Even though you know they'll approve more than that, but 200 files in one year. 200 files, Lee, at let's say the value is 200,000, 100,000 per file. How yep. much loss is mitigated just by that one employee? Oh, yeah. So say 20%. Um, we're, we're talking yeah. saving. Plus or minus. Okay. Right. So we're saving, what, a couple million bucks? At least. And what are we going to pay that? What are they going to pay that employee? Forty thousand. Oh, uh, let's year? say let's say that they're really quick at making ten to fifteen per hour, maybe a little bit of a bonus. It's not even forty thousand dollars a year. So I mean, right. of course they're going to be hiring if if they're gearing up for something like this. That just makes complete sense. I would be hiring too if I'm cleaning out my debts. Um, I would be hiring, 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 and maybe even some firing, firing, firing. I mean, let's speed up the process a little bit. Um, this well, is a, and and. And I think one of the things people forget about banks, they're extremely top heavy um, from a corporate structural point of view. This, you know, it's always a promote within, work for a company for a long time. Um, so you have a lot of management and upper management. I'm not exactly sure what they do. I, you know, I've always wondered this. How many upper management people do you physically need to have in a collection or a servicing type banking environment? Uh, especially when you're talking about shutting down production, uh, which we all know that all the banks right now are on a lower end production level. You're talking about just servicing and collecting, and the brutal bottom line to servicing and collecting is this, that there is a lot more money spent on servicing and collecting than people actually collect, right? I mean, that's just yeah. simple math. I'm going to spend a lot of money on trying to collect money from people who don't want to pay. The question is, you get into that weird game of how much money do I collect and how much do I spend on trying to collect that money? And then you get into a really, really weird area, which is, you know, where's the fine line of how much to do and how much not to do? That's exactly correct. I mean, think about it. 
you know, like a lot of people, and there's there's a really good uh, uh, HBO special. It's called Too Big to Fail. I don't know if you've seen that or yep. not. But everybody should have. Yeah, that's a really should good, be required homework. That's a really good. And there's another one that came out. Uh, I can't think of the name, but I'll, I'll remember in a second here. But long story short, is like you know, you I totally agree with you because you see, you know, from doing short sales, being on the front lines, you know, we have we'll have a great deal for them to take, and I I have their numbers, you know, I have their algorithms. I know if they're gonna, I'm saving them twenty twenty five thousand dollars, but. It just feels like I'm talking to someone who doesn't even speak English, and I'm not trying to call anyone out or anything. But it's it's the matter that there's so much, and it's much like what we're seeing with the government right now. Like, are these banks really so big with so full of bureaucracy? Bureaucracy, excuse me, um, that in their own practices they're losing money, you know, um, and in their own structure and their own setup, you know, is, is it really being run as efficient as it possibly can be? And I could. I don't think so because I could tell you just from their own short sale policies, um, how their own policies that are in place literally cost millions, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, and the sim the solutions are so 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 simple. You would you would think you would think the logic or the core logic to all of it would be simplistic principles of, you know, why here's a really simple one. If you have a system like Equator, which is now working its way into the wells. Fargo world of thinking, right? And theoretically, I guess at this rate, it'll work its way into the world of Chase. Why wouldn't you add a desktop approval system from a logical point of view? You've got a, uh, a collection system that does a lot of your online processing. Why wouldn't it have like a true, I don't know, emits or, you know, whatever you loan brokers use, a, a true physical online physical system? I don't, I don't, that's what I don't understand. I mean, I think that's sort of what the whole equator thing was meant to do is sort of streamline the process. But, uh, in fact, it sort of confused it. Um, I think that it should be really, you know, we're talking about default. So let's face it. We both know that short sales are the best way to go from the lender, from the homeowner, for the market, for all parties involved. So which is, which is why they don't have it. Okay. In a production or an up period, right? Would you say that there's more fraud now or more fraud when they were making the loans, based on your perception? Uh, it's tough. Um, I mean, it, it's really tough. I, I don't know. Right. I, if I see... you base it on the reports of what's going on right now, you would almost say that it's an equal number, correct? Yeah, I, I see more illogical decisions made now, um, knowingly, I would say, um, because I don't think – to be honest with you, I don't think that any of the banks, mortgage brokers, anyone involved in the boom had any idea that this would turn out to be what this is. Let's face it, I didn't. Yeah, that's the part that I'm blown away by. It, yeah. it was inevitable. But, I mean, I'm telling you point blank, audit-wise and otherwise, because I've done all the work and I've seen the reports, in the production period from the outside and the inside of a bank, there was far more fraudulent behavior or lax behavior than there is by far right now because there are so many eyes on the system. So the only reason you don't see an online system right now is really simple. They're afraid that someone will manipulate it and take advantage of it. Doesn't surprise me. A lot of the things I see on a daily basis right now are just the most illogical um, concept processes um, that are out there and we're baffled by it, you know. So. Doesn't surprise me, Lee. Not at all. If you want more information, go visit defaultadvocate.org. We'll take a time out. We'll come back with another story right after this.